Thomas Jefferson said it's the natural progress of things for government to gain and liberty to yield, and that's the direction in which it moves. I just hope the animal spirits of capitalism can outgrow growing government and that some politicians will say, let's try the Stossel rule, let's repeal two old laws for every new one we pass. And, and maybe and uh, with the people from the former Soviet bloc educating us about the perils of state planning, maybe some people will come forward and promote free markets. I don't know how long it would take, I don't know if it would ever happen, but things are pretty good now. Things do keep getting better despite all the whining from us in the media. Laissez-faire, competition between self-interested businesses will protect us better than government or lawyers. Now, people, when I say this, say, well, maybe that would work for us, we're educated, but what about the poor and the ignorant and the people not paying attention? You gotta have these rules to protect them. But here, too, the market works in unexpected ways to protect even the poor and the ignorant. Take cars. Do you understand what makes one car safer than another, run better than another? I sure don't, I'm no engineer. But compare the worst car you can buy here in Michigan with the best the planned economies could produce. And that was the Trabant, remember it? Whoops, too far, here it goes. This was the East German car. It was the pride of the Eastern Bloc. It and the Yugo were their best cars. And this was such a bad car. You even had to put the oil and gas in separately and then shake the car to mix it. <laughs> so why? Why was their, and, and it disappeared as soon as the Berlin Wall fell. Why was their best unable to compete with our worst? Because not everybody has to be an expert for the free market to work. You just need a few car buffs. Few people read the car magazines. And in an open society, the good news spreads. The bad news, too. Freedom will protect the ignorant as well. Now, the sad thing is that we take these miracles that the free market performs for granted. We take it for granted that I can go to a foreign country and stick a piece of plastic in the wall and cash will come out. And I can give the same piece of plastic to a total stranger who doesn't even speak English and he'll rent me a car for a week. And when I get home, Visa or MasterCard will have the accounting correct to the penny. I don't even think about it. But the government can't even count the votes accurately. <laughs> and yet people keep asking government to solve health care and to solve all our problems. Now, I'm not saying we don't need government, we do. The worst places in the world are the places that don't have enough government. They don't have rule of law. You need that. You need government to make sure I don't take your stuff or kill you. We need government to have some pollution rules. We need limited government. That was the genius of the founders. But how much government do we need? What limited, should, how limited should it be? What percent of the economy, 5%? 3%, 10%? We don't, politicians don't ask that, but I wish they would because it's instructive to look at this graph of the growth of government in America and see that for most of the history of the Republic, government was less than 5% of the economy. It's only since Lyndon Johnson and the promises of the Great Society that the line starts to go straight up. Here it is adjusted for population growth. And this line going straight up shows you how the politicians' promises now are just lies. They claim they're going to pay your medical care when you're over 65. It's a lie. Medicare is 30 to $60 trillion in the hole now. The promises they make will not be kept. And they keep making more promises, idiot promises. The wisdom of crowds, and the market is another version of that, is reflected on Intrade.com because the conservative Republicans have banned gambling in America and had to go to Ireland. Um, but there you have the best indication of what will happen in the Academy Awards or an election. They've been more accurate than anybody. And they have Obama well ahead of McCain and, and Hillary. Um, but I'm still hoping he'll come in and he'll, he'll newly embrace this. This is the, it's what made America possible. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Here, here. Limited government. And he does talk a good game. He says we need free trade. 
government is not the answer to all our problems. So maybe he was only had a very liberal voting record because he, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe he, <laughs> maybe that will change. Maybe he won't vote for bigger government. We'll see. I think Nick from the Midland Daily News had a. Yeah, sure. If this is the time. Yep. Um,